Your favorite film. Awful. Yeah, just from the title sequence alone is like one of the most disturbing serial killer just horror <laughs> things I've seen. It's actually like one of my favorite title sequences, not just because it has mm. a Nine Inch Nails song over it, but also because, uh, <laughs> also because you know, you know the the books that you see in in the title sequence, yes, and all the books that you see in the apartment of John Doe. Mm-hmm. Every single one of those books is full to the brim with writings that they believe John Doe would have said. So the production designers actually filled out all those books in the handwriting that you see for the authenticity of it. For those <laughs> just listening, I am shaking my head very slowly. <laughs> that's the, like, sometimes that type of like detail and craft is moi. But why? Why do that to those poor people? Like, those set designers and stuff. Why would you do that? That's so harsh. That's awful. I think it was actually... Th- I don't think that it was forced to do it. I think they actually... Ch- I think they chose to f- to finish it all. I don't know if it was something that Fincher... I don't know what the thing was with that. Um, mm. I've got a feeling it was the production. But you don't know, because Fincher's obviously a very... A- well, yeah, Fincher's, like, he? notorious for cracking the whip. Isn't he? Well, he's notorious for doing multiple takes, more mm. yeah, more than anything, which so I he's... never used to understand until I've seen a few more in interviews of him sort of talking about it or other actors explaining it, and you know they sort of said that. I mean, the best, the first person who explained it was Mark Ruffalo uh, when he was filming Zodiac because he said that um, he was filming the scene. They did like he said they did it like over like a hundred takes or something, right? And he said they're on like take fifty or something. And I'm sitting. He's like, I'm sitting here, like obviously it's David Fincher, and I'm thinking, like, what am I doing wrong? Like, I can't. Like, I keep trying. I'm doing my best here. Like, what am I doing wrong? Like, what's going on? And uh, he said Fincher comes walking over to me, and I think, like, oh no, he's gonna have a go at me. Like, because oh, I've done fifty takes of the same scene over and over again. Oh no, what's gonna happen? And he said that Fincher walked over to me. He patted me on the back and walked straight past me. And moved like an extra in the background, like an inch, and went, "Yeah, let's go again." <laughs> <laughs> like, and he was like, "And that's when I realised that." This dude like, is like, "I'm only ten percent of the frame, and this guy's going for a hundred percent." It's not about the necessarily just the acting for Fincher. It's about every single thing in the frame. Yeah. Like, and and I do understand that because I think a lot of the times you think, "Oh, we get the performance is fine," but it's not just the the actor that's got to deliver. It's the lighting guy, it's the camera guy, it's the sound guy, like all these things, it's the extras, all these things need to come into play um, to get the perfect shot. And, you know, Finch is such a perfectionist and, you know, it shows you know, that, that that shows in his work, you know, it shows because there's so much detail in every single frame of his movies because, you know, he puts that time in. So, yeah, so I think it's one of those things that's kind of misunderstood by people. I think people see it as like, oh, it's, it's about the actor but i don't think it is it's about the whole thing um but then it's funny because i think I, I can't remember what director it was it might be like terry gilliam or someone like that said if you have to do over like five takes or something you're a shit director or some shit i think it was ridley yeah, 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 scott yeah. i think it was ridley scott that was it yeah, yeah. and i was just it like it's, it's just funny seeing the the difference isn't it it's um, difference and and like and it, making it work yeah, and it's like, well, obviously it works for Ridley Scott because, you know, Ridley Scott made Alien and Blade Runner and Gladiator, and obviously it works, this style works for Fincher because he made, you know, everything. <laughs> All of his fucking <laughs> movies are great, um, pretty much. Uh, yeah, so I just, I think that's uh, just, yeah, that's an interesting, just the thing to talk about. Um, I mean, from an acting perspective, there is an argument to be oh, yeah, made that um, in take one, it, so say the actor needs to go on stage takes his jacket off, throws it on the chair, uh, and then goes to sit on a different chair. On the first take, that is an actor doing the actions. On the 10th take, that is the person putting his coat on his chair to relax in his other chair. So, like, I can understand it from that perspective of, like, an acting thing. Yes, definitely. But also, it's, um, it's, like, to go off what you said, they don't, like actors don't show up on set and do the stuff the first time in movies 
they've had so many like months of going through it and like pre-rehearsal yes and of course rehearsal and stuff. And yeah yeah so it, it's exactly as you said it's very um rarely that it's the actor's fault to call cut and to go again it is as you said exactly. it's the lighting it's getting everything just right just perfect which in some cases they're like nah that's what i wanted well done this was one take wonder and other times it's fincher being like actually there's a speck of dust on his glasses go again <laughs> yeah exactly exactly um oh. but yeah that i guess the results i guess um for fincher so whatever that everyone's process is different um yeah. i tried to talk about um as well the uh the ending because you know a lot of people and it's a big th- thing i've done this test myself a lot of people okay. think that you actually see gwyneth paltrow's head inside the box when you don't see her head inside the box and it's a remember. big argument that people have sometimes yeah like some yeah. people and it's a big thing like and I, i've asked loads of people and they've gone no you definitely see her head in the box i'm like you don't you don't see it no. you see I, her I think there's face, like a blood streak her face, on, on the you box see her itself. face flash you see oh. her face flash up but okay. her, it's like a, just a shot of her face it's not mm. like it's just a shot of Gwyneth paltrow's face um and uh yeah i just i just think that's so clever of the filmmakers like you know like i said any other filmmaker could have showed that head but like you don't need to like again the thought of it is worse you're seeing it through the the you can't you can't possibly see it through the eyes of mills but mm. if you don't show it you can do you know what i mean like you can feel how he feels by just holding that shot on him like as he breaks down and that's why i think pitt's great in it because i think it, that scene totally relies on his performance um and it gets me every time um it's horrible um but what i wanted to talk about to to go off of that was that there is an alternate ending um that fincher and brad pitt um actually wanted that is not the ending that you see in the movie um okay so originally what they wanted yeah so originally what they wanted was they wanted after that whole scene with what's in the box for rob uh, you know, you have that like scene afterwards where Mills is in the car, and Somerset says something along the lines of um, something like it's not worth fighting for. He says something like, "I think I." He says something like, "The world is a fine place and worth fighting for." I agree with the second part. I agree with the second part, and that's okay. that's the, that's the kind of like final line of the movie, yeah. and it's kind of like a bit more. And the studio wanted that to be in because it's like a little bit more optimistic, um, mm. which is weird because I don't find that end scene optimistic at all. Because like just seeing Mills sitting there like in the car, like just not knowing what to do with himself, like is just just oh, like yeah, what do you do? How do you continue your life after that that event? Mm. Like, um, and you know, obviously Somerset making the decision of like, yeah, I think I might have to, yeah, stick around or whatever. Um, but yeah, um, originally it was supposed to cut after the what's in the box scene so you weren't mm. gonna have that scene so it's just gonna cut to black after you found out all that stuff it was just gonna cut to black after he's after mills shoots john doe it was just gonna cut to black and um leave it but apparently what happened was um they did a test screening i believe and it cut to black but the lights came on straight away when it cut to black oh and no. the test audience didn't like it obviously but like they were annoyed because they were like well you need to sit in the dark for a bit don't you, you know what I mean? you need to before yeah, the lights can do. come on um yeah exactly um but yeah they didn't and then the studio sort of said yeah we want you to do this like another scene on top um but it's interesting because i actually like the ha- the end the scene mm. at the end i think it's interesting though that the ending of it you know cut into black um but i think it is nice to have that bit of like seeing him like just seeing how things have just completely changed and like well i because i was i thought you were going to talk about the um the original uh oh what's it called when they do the shot list not shot list when they like do the little drawings the little drawings Uh, storyboard storyboard the original storyboard ending uh because that's different as well three different endings (laughs) because in that version uh somerset kills john doe so that he like so mills can still replace him and become the new detective yeah and i guess mills can either go to jail or uh just retire 
<laughs> depending on how that judgment goes. Yeah, that's interesting, I, isn't it? Because it's mm. also like it's not giving John Doe what he wants per se, is it? Because he wants him to shoot. Because it's mm. Raph, isn't it? It's the last one. Well, yeah, that's um, the whole point. It's so that... Yeah. Because if, if Mills kills John Doe, John Doe wins because then he's got all seven of his sins. Even though yeah. that doesn't make sense because it's seven killings for seven sins. But one of... like the last two sins is oh i killed somebody else therefore i'm envy and you killed somebody else therefore you're wrath but the other five is you died because you're this sin yeah yeah um he cannot sacrifice himself he's trying to make a point isn't he i mean it's all yeah. whole shit anyway isn't he he's the serial killer isn't he <laughs> Let's be yeah, it's, it's, it's he's trying to make, make a method out of madness yeah um yeah, yeah i just wanted to ask um more on the subject well first of all do you have a favorite of those endings do you prefer the original do you prefer any of the alternate ones or um i'd say the original i i mean i'd say the original or the cut to black work i feel this is one of those films where the baddie needs to win to because the the world in depicted in that film is not is it's a negative world so the film needs a negative outcome yeah so i feel like having that extra like with the the extra scene the the ending we get it's still a negative outcome because we don't know what's going to happen to somerset but that is that like air of hope nope mills goes to jail potentially somerset has his line of hope um so that one works because it we have watched this character this this new guy come in and have his world destroyed so that works and then the cut to black also works because it is that air of mystery it's we don't know what's going to happen afterwards uh i think it was the right call to not have somerset do the kill because like it's not been about somerset really it's a it's the yeah it's mills is full of grace not somerset's if you get me yeah no, i get you what do you yeah. think yeah no i would agree with that uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think i prefer the ending that they have already i do like mm. the idea of the cut to black though i think that's interesting um but i just like having yeah i'm not too f- much of a fan of the somerset one just because i think for me you know i've just known that's the ending and i, I love that as like the end and he just gets completely tortured <laughs> um and then yeah he still wins like in a very kind of joker batman way doesn't he in terms of like mm. you know there's nothing you can do um i've won no matter what sort of yeah. thing um weird because that's like a joker's checkmate. ultimate vis- victory isn't it it's exactly, one of those that yeah. they keep playing the game but if joe if batman actually kills the joker then he- he'll go off the rails exactly because he? he doesn't have that one rule anymore no exactly um but yeah, no, so I would say the original ending I think is my favourite. But I'm intrigued by the cut to black. I might, I might almost just do it. I might just like <laughs> cut it to black and just see <laughs> just see how I feel about it. Um, just the gunshot, yeah, no, pause, um, film, walk away. <laughs> yeah. What's your favourite? God, that's awful. Favourite? Awful. Awful. 